Hello everybody, it's Sarah and today I'm here with a type of video that I have not done in a while and that is a review. And that review you will probably already know if you have read the title of this video, which you probably have since you probably clicked on this video, is going to be a review of The Nevernight Chronicles by Jay Kristoff. And since I did recently finish Dark Dawn, which is the third book in the series, which of course was published at the beginning of September, and I did reread the first two books before I went into it, I thought that I would just gather all my thoughts on the series as a whole and give you a spoiler free review on the series and tell you what stuff I liked, what stuff I didn't like and then go into a spoilery discussion of Dark Dawn because oh my god I have so many thoughts on this book and I don't know anyone who has read this yet, they're all either still in the middle of it or haven't even read the series at all and I just need to share all my thoughts. Anyway, first for the spoiler-free series review, The Nevernight Chronicles is a trilogy which of course consists of the first book Nevernight, which I don't have here right now because I lent it out and I actually have it in paperback form, but I'm really thinking of getting the hardcover because look at these beauties and I kind of want the first one as a hardcover as well, but anyway, that's like my thoughts on that. The first book is Nevernight, the second book of course is God's Grave and the third book is Dark Dawn and I will put Dark Dawn down for now and just hold up God's Grave because holding up two hardcovers for a whole video that is probably going to be very long is kind of hard. Continuing on though, this is a high fantasy series that probably belongs into the realm of new adult if we had that genre because it is kind of written like a YA book, like I think the writing reminds me very much of a YA book and when I read it I don't think of adult fantasy. Also the main character is between 17 and 18 but I don't usually think that the age of the main character is an indicator of whether or not a book is young adult or adult. However, most of the side characters are also in that age group, late teens, early 20s, and I do think that is usually an indicator of that, because in an adult high fantasy book you will usually have a lot more like adult characters or older characters as well, and how often can I say usually right now? But anyway, moving on to the stuff that isn't so young adult. The whole series is very gory. There's a lot of very graphic violence and gore in the whole series uh, because we follow an assassin, so obviously that's going to be in there. Also, there's a lot of swearing, which I usually don't really care about that much, so I don't really see it as an indicator for young adult or adult, but a lot of people I know do think that a lot of swearing shouldn't be in younger people's literature and also there are a few graphic sex scenes. So that's also often an indicator for something being more along the lines of new adult rather than young adult. So now that we have the more formal stuff out of the way, let's move into a summary of the series. The series is set in a world that is very reminiscent of the ancient Roman Empire and it's set in the Republic of Etreia. We follow our main character Mia, whose parents when she was 11 were killed by kind of the ringleaders of the Republic. Now she is 17 or 18 and we follow her as she starts studying at a school for assassins because of course she swore revenge on the people who killed her parents or on the people responsible for killing her parents. And yeah, that's all I want to say about the summary of the series. That's all you kind of need to know. So part of the series is the revenge plotline and then there's also a small part of the series that kind of goes along the lines of the chosen one tropes but that doesn't come into play that much in the first book, so I don't really need to talk about that too much, but it's kind of already hinted at, so it's not a spoiler. So now on to the stuff that I enjoyed and that I didn't enjoy in this series. Let's start with the negatives, so that we have that all out of the way, and then I can start raving on what I really loved in this series. The first thing that I think most people complain about in this series, I don't think I have ever seen a review of any of the books where they said, oh my god, I love the footnotes that Jay Kristoff put into that series. Um, because yeah, he put a lot of footnotes in the series. 
I gotta give him credit though, most of the footnotes are at the beginning of the first book and then they get less throughout the first book and then there's less footnotes in the second book and even less footnotes in the third book. The thing with footnotes is I don't enjoy them. I think there may be people who enjoyed them, but usually I don't really think they're useful. I have one other book that I read that also had footnotes, that was the Bartimaeus sequence by Jonathan Strout, and I don't really remember if I enjoyed them or I didn't enjoy them because I read that series so long ago. But most of my unit professors always say one thing about footnotes. If you can't put it in a text and you have to use footnotes to say something, then it's not worth saying it at all. And I kind of agree with that. Because in Nevernight the footnotes, first of all, most of the footnotes don't even have any useful information. And the few things of useful information that you get in the footnotes, you could easily put into the text. Mostly they're just trying to be humorous and most of the time I didn't find them that funny. And also 90% of the time they kind of bring you out of the reading flow because you're just reading and then there's this star and then you're like oh my god there's a footnote and then you go down and you read the footnote and it has nothing to do with what you're actually reading just now it's just kind of tidbits of information like why this bridge is called that and how this cathedral came to be built and that type of stuff so like not things you actually need for the plot and they kind of bring you out of it and I remember when I first read Nevernight I completely ignored the footnotes at all and I had no problems understanding what was going on in the book so there really isn't any useful information in there that you would need to know to understand what's happening in the plot and to understand the background and I only just decided to read them this time around when I reread the books. And then another thing that's for me personally to be honest more amusing than really just like something negative is that sometimes it's just really made obvious that this book is written by a male author it's just little things and i won't go too much into spoilers but like for example there's a scene in one of the books where mia is fighting someone and she takes off her shirt because she wants to distract her opponent with her boobs because of course she has nothing on underneath it and it's just like I don't think a female author would ever write such a scene and it's not like it's something that bothers me or anything it's just kind of funny and amusing but I think some people might be bothered by those types of scenes but there's only like really one scene per book where I'm like oh my god this makes it really obvious that this was written by a male author and I've also heard a lot of people say that the sex scenes make it really obvious that it was written by a male author but I don't read the sex scenes too closely because I don't really care about them too much so like I just skim over them so I can't really talk about that too much and something that might be a positive or might be a negative depending on what you personally prefer I'm mostly neutral on that is the writing in the book I have heard a lot of people say that they don't really enjoy Jay Kristoff's writing and that that's the reason why they didn't enjoy Nevernight or the whole series and that's because Jay Kristoff's writing is very metaphorical and very descriptive. I think you might call Jay Kristoff's writing flowery although it's not really flowery because it doesn't beautify things because of course a lot of these books is about death but the thing that he does is that he uses a lot of metaphors and that he uses like a lot of descriptors I would say and then another thing he does but I think it is on purpose I don't think that it's because he lacks any writing skills is that he's very repetitive so he will use a metaphor again and again and again and by the end of the third book you already know that metaphor although he does use different ones in each book generally but it's just it's just something that he uses in his writing and I don't really care for it either way like I don't mind it but I'm also not like oh my god I love it it's just the writing is what it is 
and yeah it depends on you whether you enjoy that or not okay then next to something where i can say something positive about it and something negative and that is the representation as far as i saw there wasn't too much representation as far as ethnic backgrounds go there are a couple of different countries but like it's set again in a very roman inspired setting so very european in a way so most characters are white but there is representation as far as a bisexual main character goes and some people might think that it's a spoiler because it's only really hinted at that mia is bisexual in the first book and it's only confirmed in the second book but i personally don't think so i would have loved to know that already when going into nevernight it would have made me want to read it more and it's just I don't think sexuality is ever really a spoiler even if it's only revealed in the last word of the last page or like confirmed um, so that's just something that I wanted to mention that Mia is a bisexual character and I also want to mention it because we really don't get a lot of bisexual characters especially in high fantasy sadly I do love that there's a lot more representation when it comes to sexuality especially in YA and new adult novels but we still have to say that most of the representation is of male male relationships and that bisexuality and female female relationships sadly fall kind of short I overall really enjoy the plot of the books. I like the pacing of the books. Most of the time the beginning of the books is a bit slower. Of course the first book is the slowest book at the beginning because you kind of have to get all the world building in and all the explanations in and what's going on. And then the ending of all the books are like so fast paced and things happen one after another but not in a way where it feels rushed or too fast and I absolutely love the pacing of the books I like the twists in the books there's a couple of them some of them I saw coming from miles away because they were kind of obvious and I actually think some of the very obvious twists were made obvious on purpose because they kind of hid some of the less obvious twists afterwards and it was just like oh my god okay I saw that twist kind of coming and then afterwards straight afterwards it was like what the fuck I didn't see that coming at all so I really enjoyed that so now next on to the thing that I think is the strongest thing about the whole series and that is the characters and their relationships first our main character Mia who gets my strong female character stamp of approval if you know me at all, you will know that I am quite particular about my strong female characters. I can be quite harsh on them. I do not like most strong female characters that everyone else is raving about. And if you want to know more of my thoughts on that, I will leave a video that I did in the description box down below as well as in the eye. And actually something that I didn't say in that video that I'm scared of saying even is that a lot of times if they write strong female characters I think male authors are a lot better at it than female authors because male authors if they write strong female characters will actually give them like a more well-rounded character compared to just wish fulfillment and oh my god this character is so amazing and so good and she's better at fighting than the boys and that's actually something that I enjoyed about Mia yes yeah, she is very good at fighting but it's actually not even the thing that she's best at she's also very smart and very resourceful and she has to fight to get better at fighting and she's never set against the boys when someone tells her oh my god I can't imagine you being good at fighting you're a little girl it's not the girl part of that sentence that's important it's the little part it's very much set in a world where most fighters are men but it's not unusual to see great warriors who are women and the thing that's unusual about her when she's set against other people is that she physically is just smaller and that's the reason why no one believes that she can beat 
those other people at fighting. But as I said, she's also very smart and resourceful. She's also very stubborn, which isn't necessarily a good thing. And she goes through tons of character development throughout the whole series. And I absolutely loved seeing that. Next, I don't even want to talk about my second favorite character because I think that spoilers actually but the thing that I also want to mention is that this whole series has one of my favorite tropes and that is the mentor and his student. I absolutely love Mia's and Mercurius relationship. I love it when there's kind of this grumpy older man who takes in this orphaned little girl and teaches her and he just ends up being a kind of father figure for her and you don't really get a lot of their interactions throughout the whole series but it's made very clear that they have a close relationship and it's just i love that whole part of the series and as i said like the relationships the interpersonal relationships especially in dark dawn really are at the center of the series they're not at the center of the plot but for me that's just what makes the series great. And since this is getting long enough already, let me now go into the discussion for God's Grave. So if you do not want any spoilers, if you do not want to know how the whole series ends, then cut away now, read the whole series and then come back again. And as I said, I highly, highly recommend the whole series. It's been a long time since I feel like a new author with a series is gonna get a spot on my favorite shelf. I think the last time that happened was Brandon Sanderson and that was years and years ago, but I'm definitely, definitely gonna make space on my favorite shelf for this series. So fair to say, I really do recommend this series, but now I need to get into my thoughts on Dark Dawn. And this might be a bit jumbled because I just like, I kind of just put notes down here and they're in no particular order, but I'm, I'm just gonna go through it, okay? The first thing I wrote down is Ash and Trick. I think the two of them were probably my favorite part about Dark Dawn. I loved their... I'm not sure if you could call it bantering, because banter just kind of like indicates good-natured, good-willed banter, you know? Uh, but I loved their back and forth at the beginning of the book and at the end of the book I fucking teared up when Ash finally said sorry and Trick forgave her and then she basically died in his arms. Not really, she just like fell down in his arms and I was like, oh my God, I was crying. The, the, the whole book, by the way, I cried a lot at the end. But Ash and Trick were, oh, I love them so much. The next thing I wrote down was Mercurio as the author of the Nevernight Chronicles. I'm not sure how I enjoy that because, I mean, okay, you could say it's a book that appeared magically, so the first two books, it doesn't matter if he actually knew what was going on, but he, like, he wasn't there for a lot of Mia's story, you know? But you could say, okay, the first two books appeared magically, so he just remembered what was written in them. But then again, if this, this is the book that Mercurio wrote, how does he know of the ending and the last scene between Ash and Mia? Like, it doesn't make sense. And like, the thing I would have loved if like Mr. Kindly was the author or something, I don't know. So I'm not sure if I like that part or that revelation too much, to be honest. My absolutely favorite scene in the whole series, I think one of my absolutely favorite scenes in general in any series, is the scene when Mia showed her fucking big dick and she killed the Pirate King and then she plopped down on his throne and she's bloody and half naked. And that dude is like, who are you? And she's like, I'm your queen. Oh my God, I love that so, so much. <laughs> I could rave on about that scene forever and ever and ever. It's so good, so good. I love Mia so much. Like, I don't like her as a person, but I love her as a character so, 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 so much. And I also love Ashlyn so much and I love Trick so much. Oh my God, they're all... Ugh. Trick... Trick 
in the last book. I was like okay with him in the first book. I kind of liked him, but I wasn't like he wasn't on top of my favorite characters forever and ever list. But in the last book, he made himself a space as like one of my favorite fictional babies. I have a list of boys, of characters, most of them actually are Cassandra Clare's characters like Jem and also Jules and they're like these are characters that I absolutely love and I just want to give them a hug and I want to give them a kiss on their forehead and I want to put them like in bed and read them a good night story and just they deserve the world so much and Trick made it onto that list and they're literally the characters that I will love the most. I, by the way, if the camera is shaking, I'm sorry. I constantly hit the table that my tripod is standing on. Anyway, I will... <sighs> Trick made it onto that list. I love Trick. Trick is my baby. He's my baby. It just is what it is. Something I did not enjoy too much in this book is that I thought there were kind of too many sex scenes. In the end I was kind of like, yeah. I mean I love that Ash and Mia were kind of like just unapologetically in love with each other and I love their relationship. I absolutely love their relationship but it was just like at one point when I read this book it kind of felt like every second page was a new sex scene and I was like Come on, let's let's move on with the plot. I mean, I enjoy a good sex scene sometimes when I'm in the mood for it, but it's not plot furthering unless it's like in the second book. And so I'm just like, let's let's move it, keep it moving. So yeah, that wasn't something that I enjoyed too much. So as I said earlier, something of my favorite things in the whole series are the interpersonal relationships and I loved Mia's and Jonan's relationship development. It was so heartwarming to see how Jonan warmed up to her and just slowly just started caring for her and the same also with the relationships. Again, Mia and Mercurio, I love them so much. The very last scene when Mia kind of says goodbye to Mercurio, I think that was the scene where I cried the most in the whole book. I was so heartbroken when she tells him he's familiar and oh my god, I loved it so much. And also Mia's and Trick's every single interaction between them my heart was breaking and it was so good and it's just it was just such a good hurt you know what i mean and uh, oh my god i love the relationships in this book it's uh, so beautiful it was so 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 beautiful to see then i apparently wrote just i hurt i don't even know why <laughs> Uh, because I heard a lot in this book. In fact, the whole last like 150 to 200 pages, I just heard. Uh, but yeah, uh, I don't remember which exact scene I meant with this. I think it might have been one of the times when Trick told Mia he loves her and he came back for her. Um, but I'm not 100% sure. Uh, that's why you write down more four notes like huh funny something that i really enjoyed in this book and those were actually the scenes where i cracked up the most were whenever j christoph made fun of his own writing so whenever he was like okay people can tell that he's a male author or whenever it was made fun of that he used footnotes or whenever like the language he uses to write this book was made fun of and I really enjoyed that. I can enjoy an author kind of being aware and kind of like breaking the fourth wall in a way because it was just kind of done in a very good natured way where you are made aware that he is aware of what people criticize about his books 
but that he's also aware that he made those choices and he stands by those choices and he's not ashamed of those choices. So I just really enjoyed that. Like, because of course an author can have his own choices and we as a reader, we can enjoy them or we can't enjoy them. If we don't enjoy them, then just read another book and if you enjoy them, read more by that author. And yeah, so I really enjoyed that part. Okay, now let's get to the things that I kind of didn't enjoy about the ending actually, even though it broke my heart a lot and I did cry a lot. The first thing is Ash dying. And the thing about that I didn't like is that Trick already came back from the dead. And I'm not a fan of resurrection storylines, even though I, I'm so happy Trick came back because otherwise he wouldn't have joined my babies club. But anyway, I'm not generally a fan of resurrection storylines because as soon as you resurrect a character, kind of the stakes are down a little bit. Also, I have a whole video on character deaths and when I like them and when I don't like them. So I will also leave that in the description box and up in the eye. But anyway, I didn't really cry when Ash died. I cried the scene before that between her and Trick, but I didn't cry when she died because I was like, mm, I'm kind of sure she's gonna come back. Like, I won't cry until I definitely know that she's dead. So yeah, that was something that I found kind of like, I didn't dislike it, but I found kind of sad for the reading experience that I could have had. And then the other thing is the ending. It both destroyed me and brought me back together because like I wasn't sure until the end if Jay Christoph would go there, if he killed Mia. And I'm not sure if I like it or not because it made me so happy because it put me back together to see Mia and Ash in the little cottage on the lake. But also I would have kind of loved it if Jay Kristoff had just done that, if he had just killed off Mia and Ash. And I only know one author that I remember that actually killed off the main character at the end of a series and didn't bring them back at all. And I won't tell you which author it is because that would be spoilers. But like, I loved it, but I also didn't like it because I, I think I would have loved it if Jake Christoph had just gone there. If he had just killed off Mia and then made Ash kill herself again. Because like Trick killed himself. Ash could have just killed herself as well. So yeah, I'm, I'm not too sure of that. And also what I don't like about it is it just seems that Mia and Ash are now in their cottage on the lake and they're just ignoring everyone else and it just I don't know it doesn't sit right with me for how important Mercurio and John and Arch Mia that it just seems like she's now gonna ignore that they exist and she's just gonna be happy in her little cottage at the lake with Ash and just like I don't know it's it's hard it's hard also because like as far as killing off characters go, a lot of the Falcons died, but like the two most important ones, the two we cared about the most, uh, he didn't have the guts to kill off, which I'm happy about, but I also like, I don't know, I'm kind of masochistic in a way. I really enjoy it when authors have the guts to kill off characters, but where it's not just like killing them off to kill them off. So I like, I don't know. It's it's interesting. But yeah, that was it for this discussion and review. I hope this video isn't going to be so long. Tell me in the comments down below what you thought of Dark Dawn, if you loved it as much as I did, because please, I need someone to talk about with this book. Like, I need someone. I don't have anyone. Please talk to me, come talk to me, DM me on Twitter, follow me on social media. I have like all the links to my social media in the description box down below as well. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and maybe subscribe and I hope I will see you soon. Bye.